Hey, this is part two to my update to Unity ML Agents Truffle Pig tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna go deeper into the code. I actually got a request from one of you to go deeper into the code because in the original tutorial, I kind of went quickly through that. So this one goes into the pig area code. So at the top, we have these pig area objects, pig agent, ground, success material, failure material, score text. These are all just references to things that we're gonna use later. The truffle prefab and stump prefab, we set those up just so that they can spawn instances of them later in the code. Here, we have three things that we use to keep track of what's going on. So we have a number of truffles, stumps, and a spawn range that is for at any given time what it uses local versions of those so that it doesn't constantly have to check the parameters. And then we keep this list of spawned truffles and spawned stumps, which we use later to make sure that we can clean them up properly and, and just keep track of them. Then we have this list here. This is new, something that I hadn't used before, but is now my way of checking to make sure that the position that I'm about to place something is not already occupied. So it's a list of tuples. And if you're not familiar with what a tuple is, it's just a pair and tuples there. You use them for dictionaries to create a key value pair. Very similar thing here. It's a vector three and a float. So it's a position and a radius. So these, this is just a list of positions that are occupied and the radius of space around those positions that are occupied. And I'll show you where I set that down below. And then here's just the renderer and the material for the ground. And in the previous video, I showed how you, uh, or I talked about setting the ground material to a different color on success or failure. And that's why we do this initial setup here. We get the component, the rendering component of it, which we then use to set the material, uh, the ground material to be a different material on success. Now for the first real code that's happening here, we have the reset area thing. This is called for us anytime we're resetting. And the first thing it does is it clears out that occupied positions list because now we won't have any occupied positions. First thing we do is reset the agent. And resetting the agent, if we scroll down to that, is really just using this randomly place objects function that places the pig agent within the spawn range, and it'll try that up to 10 times if it fails to find the location, uh, found, find a spot to put it, which in this case, there's nothing else that's going to be there, so it will not fail. Now this randomly place object, this one I kind of glossed over in the previous video, so I'll go deeper into this. So as I say here, it attempts to randomly place an object by checking a sphere around a potential location for collisions. So in this case, it's still technically kind of checking within a sphere, but everything's on a 2D plane, so it effectively is just checking circles. And it takes in an object to be randomly placed, a range in the X and Z to choose a random point, and the, num the maximum number of attempts to try. Now the first thing I do, just to make sure that we don't have any real trouble with collisions or anything is I just disable the collider. I don't know if this is absolutely necessary, but it'll help just to make sure that we don't have any weird things when we uh, place things down. The first thing I do though, after that is I get the radius of that collider. So this get collider radius is a, another function that I've written below. So we're going pretty deep here. This one gets a local space radius that draws a circle on the XZ plane around the boundary of the collider. What the heck does that mean? So basically there's a spot on the floor, a circle of space around this object. The collider might be a box collider or a mesh collider in this case. And if it's a mesh collider, what it does, it first it gets the collider component, then it takes the bounds or it creates a new vector three to keep track of how big this collider is, Set to, sets it to zero. It takes the mesh collider 
if it is in fact a mesh collider, and it gets this shared mesh dot bounds dot size. So all this is doing is it's just telling us how big is this, the boundaries of this collider. And it's a little different for boxes. So that's why it does that differently when it finds this box collider, it does this collider dot bounds dot size. And really you can imagine this like whether you have a box or a thing, a mesh, with the box, it's easy to visualize. Imagine having a cardboard box. The size of it is from the bottom corner up to the opposite top corner. So you imagine like a string going from the top, you know, to the bottom corner. And that's kind of the size that you get. Same thing with a mesh. If you had a weird shaped mesh, in this case, a pig, imagine fitting that perfectly into a box and getting that exact same length of string that goes from one corner to the opposite top corner. That is the size. And so we do scale that just to make sure in case things have been locally scaled. And then we divide it by two because we want half of that size. And, and this max thing here too is important. So we're taking the maximum size in the X and the maximum size in the Z directions, or the maximum of those two, and then we divide it by two. So really what we're doing is what's the furthest it can go in either direction, and then use that as the diameter of our circle of safety, and then divide that by two to get the radius. So back up here, this was where we called that to get our test radius. We also expand it by 10% by multiplying by 1.1. We set a random rotation when we're randomly placing this object first. And it shouldn't matter because no matter what we rotate it, the same boundary circle will apply. And that's just setting a um, quaternion.euler, um, new vector three, zero in the X, zero to 360, or this is a rotation around the Y axis, and then zero in the Z. So really this is just a rotation around the Y axis, which is the up axis. So it's a turning right or left for the pig in this case, or the stump or the truffle. Then we have this loop. So it's going to loop for a certain number of attempts. So we start at the first attempt and then we keep going until it hits the max attempts limit. And we have this vector three random local position equals new vector three. We're doing a random number here between negative range and range. Here's what my pigbrainlearning.json looks like with the spawn range set to 12 all the way across. Before it was two, three, five, 12, 12. Once I set it to 12, 12, 12, 12, the learning really stabilized quite a bit. So in our case, we're using 12 inside of a 25 by 25 meter uh, box. And so this is from negative 12 in the X to negative 12 or to positive 12 and same in the Z, but not in the Y. We don't want it to spawn 12 meters in the air or 12 meters underground. That's not what we're interested in, just in the X and Z directions. So that's a random local position that's going to be tested. We do scale it here just by the local scale, just to make sure that uh, we don't, we aren't doing this only in world space. This is the part that I've commented out. This check sphere was what we were doing before. Um, the check sphere wasn't working for me. And so this not ground layer mask is no longer necessary. Instead, I created my own sort of check sphere thing. And it uses this check if position is open method that I defined. And what that does is it detects if a test position has a radius of clear space around it. So that's kind of what I was describing earlier. So it uses that occupied positions list of positions and radiuses, radii, and it, uh, it goes through and it, first thing it does is it pulls out the occupied position and the occupied radius, and it checks to see if that's within a certain distance minus the radius, and it just, it creates a test radius. So if there's a conflict, it's going to return false.
because the position is not open. Otherwise, it's just going to keep looping through all those occupied positions until it finds or until it gets to the end and returns true that this position is open. If it is, then we place this thing. We set its local position to that random local position. We add this position to the occupied positions because now it, there is a new thing in this place. We don't know if it's a pig or a truffle or a stump. It doesn't matter. It still adds it with its radius, this test radius, with which we calculated above from that get collider radius. And if we reach, if we're above the max number of attempts, then we'll log an error. But I've found that this really hasn't been a problem uh, with this new logic before. I think it was never a problem because it wasn't actually working, but now it seems to still not be a problem. And ultimately at the end, we will enable collision again. Again, this is probably less relevant now that we're doing this check sphere thing. And in hindsight, that actually might have been potentially probably, no, probably not part of the problem because this check sphere was not checking for this collision. It was checking for collision with other objects, but who knows? Uh, what was likely the problem here is that physics gets updated every, you know, number, some number of milliseconds. And because a new set of milliseconds hadn't happened, the check sphere wasn't working because this was all happening in a single frame. So that wraps up what's happening in pig area and all the changes, at least at, from going down deep in. The only other things that I didn't really cover here, and I'll go back up to, is we do the exact same thing with truffles and stumps. So reset truffles and reset stumps. The only thing that happens that's different is instead of just one pig agent, we're actually doing this with all of the truffles. And the first thing we do is we destroy any truffles that are remaining from the previous run. So we take this spawned truffles array and we just destroy them all. And then we create a new list of spawned truffles and we spawn them. And we do this randomly place object thing again after instantiating it. And then we add it to the list of spawned truffles. Exact same thing for stumps. This, these are no different. It's just stumps that it's keeping track of instead. And the only other thing that I didn't go over was the swap ground material. This is pretty straightforward. We just set the material to a different material if there's a success or failure and we wait for half a second and then we swap it back to what it was.